Cheney's Temple Owls are pointing toward another Atlantic 10 championship. The Owls boast a physical front line led by sweet shooting Mick Kilgore, who can also go to the glass and score. He combines with 6'9 forward Mark Strickland, who's hoping to lead Temple to postseason play. Rutgers do it all, man, is Steve Worthy. The Trenton native leads the Scarlet Knights in scoring, assists, and steals. Worthy provides Bob Wenzel with strong floor leadership. Tonight, Rutgers is hoping its quickness and athletic ability leads to a celebration in this Atlantic 10 rivalry. this rivalry. He's former Rutgers All-American Roy Henson. Roy, what is it about Temple and Rutgers whenever they get together? Well, geographically, first of all, you have a team, two teams that are close together. Also, you have two perennial powers in the Atlantic 10. So with, with two combinations like that, you're going to have a very good matchup. Well, it's a game, a great rivalry, played for a lot of pride. Here's what Rutgers coach Bob Wenzel thinks about the rivalry. The last several years, Rutgers and Temple have, have uh, been in postseason tournaments, NCAA and NIT, and of course uh, the Atlantic 10 uh, success that's been happening lately is in huge part to those two schools. Uh, this is the big against the little. Uh, our small guys against Temple's big guys, they don't have Macon and Hodge anymore, however, and, and we've got some new players out there too. It says Temple and it says Rutgers, so it should be exciting. And one of the exciting players that Bob Wenzel will be counting on is his junior shooting guard, Steve Worthy. He leads the Knights in points, assists, and steals. This guy, I tell you, he's a really, really phenomenal player. Uh, I thought that when he first came in, he would take some time to get adjusted. But he's come in, he's led this nice and scoring, played some very good defense. He's the all-around player. When he clicks, the team clicks. One of the players that Wenzel will be counting on up front is 6'9 center Chuck Weiler. He'll have his hands full with a very physical Temple front line. Yeah, I tell you, throughout the years, he's held his own through, um, through some of the tougher opponents um, against the U U UNLV. He's done a pretty good job against their center. He clogs up the middle, does a very good job, and he's leading the league right now in shot blocking. All right, Temple, a big front line, 6'9", 6'9", and 6'10", for John Cheney. They broke a two-game losing streak at West Virginia. Eddie Jones was the hero. Temple was down by three points when Jones drove to the basket and was able to cut the Mountaineers' lead to one on a great individual effort. Then it was Jones, the hero, again. Jones creating to Mark Strickland, and Mark Strickland able to jam it home for the win. 63-62 Temple winning in more. Morgantown, so if you can win in Morgantown, Temple thinks they can win here in Piscataway. Oh, I think so. Playing in West Virginia is a, a different ball game altogether. Them guys down there are crazy. I mean, they're literally crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a very good win for Temple down there. Aaron McKee normally starts at the shooting guard spot. He is out with a bruised knee. He may play, but he won't start. Eddie Jones will start in his place, but that's a big factor for the Temple Owls, right? Yes, it is. I know Rutgers is really holding their breath, hoping that McKee doesn't come in because here's a guy, he leads him in scoring, and he's done a great job. He's a prop 48, so he didn't play last year, but he's done a lot of things well this year, and I tell you, if he gets to play a little bit, he could pose a lot of problems for Rutgers. Oh, well, we saw Mark Strickland with the winning jam against West Virginia. He's the key for Temple up front. They're a much bigger team than Rutgers. Yes, there's going to prove to be a lot of problems, if, especially if uh, Rutgers haven't faced anyone to his uh, caliber inside, so it's going to be a good test for Rutgers centers. All right, an Atlantic 10 matchup. The Scarlet Knights of Rutgers and the Temple Owls will be back with the starting lineups right after this. 
Welcome back to the Lewis Brown Athletic Center as we get ready for Rutgers and Temple. A new capacity crowd, just a couple of hundred tickets remain prior to tip-off. Right now for the starting lineups, let's go to public address announcer Jim Wilson. As you can see, Bob Wenzel, the 1971 Rutgers graduate who has led his team to two NCAA bids and an NIT appearance in just three seasons. And his Scarlet Knights going up against John Cheney and the Temple Owls. Right now, we'll go to Jim Wilson for the starting lineups. Good evening and welcome to the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. This evening, the Scarlet Knights host Atlantic 10 opponent, the Owls of Temple University. Here are tonight's starting lineups. At one forward for Temple, a 6'9 senior from Philadelphia, number 24, Mick Kilgore. At forward for Rutgers, a 6'5 junior from Morrisville, Pennsylvania, number 24, Mike Jones. At the other forward for Temple, number 30, a 6'9 senior from Atlanta, Georgia, Mark Strickland. And the other forward for Rutgers, number 32, a 6'5 senior from Washington, D.C., Daryl Smith. At center for the Owls, a 6'10 junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, number 44, Frazier Johnson. Center for Rutgers, number 33, a 6'9 sophomore from Haddonfield, Charlie Weiler. And one guard for Temple, a six foot junior from Camden, number three, Vic Karstarfin. And a guard for Rutgers, number 11, a 6'1 freshman from the Bronx, Damon Santiago. Temple, number 21, a six foot six inch sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida, Eddie Jones. And at guard for Rutgers, a 6'5 junior from Trenton, number 21, Steve Worthy. Temple is coached by John Cheney. Cheney with a record of 221 and 73 in his 20th year, and Bob Wenzel in his fourth season here at Rutgers with a record of 62 and 42 here on the banks of the Raritan. Take a look at the team comparison. Rutgers comes into the game averaging almost 83 points a game. Yeah, they're doing a good job of putting the points on the board, but what's also been key is their defense. They're doing a good job of um, uh, putting the pressure on them. You see also the rebounds. Rutgers has been really out-rebounded. You know, that's a good stat against a team like Temple, but they've been out-rebounded the last few times going out. So it's going to be tough for them to make sure they get on the board. I'm sure Temple has said, you know, push these guys, and I'm sure Coach Wendell has said, uh, this, get, this is kind of get on the boards. Temple is last in rebounding in the Atlantic 10, but Rutgers has been out-rebounded by Duquesne and by Delaware. Our officials tonight, Phil Bova, Gene Mangi, and David Dodge. Temple leads this series 22 to 12. It dates back to 1919-1920 that season. So Chuck Weiler will jump it up against Mick Kilgore. And Kilgore able to control the tap. This is Victor Starfin, the junior from Camden, who runs the show for the Temple Owls. Eddie Jones, who gets the start. Despite a muscle spasm in his shooting arm, you can see his right arm taped. And here's Strickland. Strickland pulls up. It won't go. Eddie Jones rebound. And a foul inside. Very good play that time by Eddie Jones getting on the offensive rebounds. I'm sure Cheney has told his team to get on the offensive board because Rutgers does a poor job of boxing out. The foul goes on Daryl Smith. And that will send Jones to the line. Jones, who started the first six games of the season for Temple, 
64% free throw shooter. And he breaks the seal on this game. And now John Chaney pulls his owls off the line and just leaves Jones a very lonely figure on the charity strike. I'm sure that disrupted him because he's shooting in a sea of red at the end of the basket. He makes one of two, so Temple's up 1-0. Early moments of our PSEMG Game of the Week. Here's Mike Jones and Steve Worthy, and Rutgers goes into that familiar weave offense that Wenzel has adopted this year. I don't think it's going to be that effective this uh, against Temple's because they play that 1-3-1 matchup zone, uh, which is going to cause a problem, driven the ball up top. Here's Damon Santiago getting the start for the injured Mark Redden. Shows good instincts in going to the hoop, and he's fouled inside. The foul going on Mark Strickland. One way to, uh, to break that, break up that uh, defense is dribble, dribble penetration. That should have never happened. If they were playing the defense properly, they should, they should have never been able to have someone penetrate, especially get all the way to the basket. Damon Santiago, a freshman from the Bronx, averaging 3.6 points a game. He had a career high 11 points against Delaware when he got the start for Redden, who's out with an injured left ankle. Yeah, he came in and played very, very well. He really impressed me. Uh, he didn't look like a freshman the last game out. Bob Wenzel said, I wanted to plug Santiago into the lineup at guard. I could have moved Mike Jones to the point guard spot, but that would have reshuffled the entire team. So instead, the freshman gets a start in their second Atlantic 10 game of the year. And there is the Rutgers pressure, forcing a turnover. That's the key for Rutgers' team this year, their defensive pressure. John Chaney said we have to be able to handle Rutgers' pressure defense. We also have to keep them off the boards. Steve Worthy for three. No, and it's rebounded by big Frazier Johnson, number 44. 6'10", down to 260 or 270, according to John Chaney. <laughs> he looks every bit of 270 to me. Eddie Jones rears up from three-point range, just nicks the rim. Out of bounds, Rutgers ball. Almost potentially another offensive rebound. That time, Kil Kilgrove was uh, forced out of bounds. So now Santiago. That Delaware game you spoke about, Roy, his first extended playing time since the early exhibition games of the Scarlet Knight season. And he came in, as I said, he played very, very well. Daryl Smith back out top to Chuck Weiler. And here goes Mike Jones from Morrisville, Pennsylvania. That won't go for Jones. And you can be sure he wants to play well living outside of Philadelphia and playing for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Oh, yeah, I'm sure in the summertime he probably plays basketball against some of these guys. Jones down low to Frazier. Johnson can't get it to go, and there is Daryl Smith with the rebound. You don't get him any closer than that. <laughs> That's what Temple likes to do, pound the ball down low to Strickland and Frazier Johnson. Well, they're a different team this year. They're not as, uh, they don't have that great outside shooter as, uh, as they had in Macon last year. Mark Macon used to kill Rutgers. He scored 237 points against Rutgers, averaging over 23 points a game against the Scarlet Knights. Bob Wessel was very glad to see Macon go. In fact, I, he probably went to his graduation to see him off. <laughs> to make sure he was definitely out. That's a two by Eddie Jones, and Temple leads 3-1. about the weave is that it allows Rutgers to go from a very frenetic pace on defense to patience on offense and Worthy throws the three-point basket. Again they come along with the pressure. Nearly a walk by Jones. And now the Owls control. And a foul down low. Johnson trying to fight for a position. Gave uh, Weiler a little, little elbow in the throat there. That's one on Frazier Johnson. Two on the Owls with 16.55 to play here in the first half. Temple loves to play that matchup zone, Roy. Right? It has been very effective for him over the years. Jones misses the open shot from the baseline. Johnson rips the rebound away from Weiler. But it went out of bounds. Off 
tempo, and it'll be Rutgers ball. The fans here like it in Piscataway. That time Johnson was trying to be a little bit, little bit too, too physical, trying to um, establish his authority, and doing that, he was swinging his elbows around and lost the ball. John Chaney wants timeout. So we'll take a break. Cheney arguing his cause. Rutgers leading Kemple 4-3. Back in Piscataway. I'm Pat Scanlon along with Roy Hinson, NJN Sports, PSENG Game of the Week. Tonight it's an Atlantic 10 matchup. Kemple and Rutgers. Rutgers clinging to a 4-3 lead, but the bigger story is two personal fouls on Temple Center, Frazier Johnson. Could pose to be a problem. As we take a look at the Atlantic 10 standings, the Atlantic 10 very well before entering conference play. Rutgers at 1-0, Temple at 2-1. Some other teams leading to balance in this league now. George Washington, Rhode Island, UMass. Hey, the Atlantic 10 has taken a large lead, especially after last season. He had almost six teams in postseason play. Scarlet Knights to inbound. Wenzel stays with Santiago, Jones, Weiler, Worthy, and Smith. John Cheney leaves Johnson in with two fouls. Ball goes out of bounds off the hand of Mark Strickland. So Mike Jones will trigger for Rutgers. Daryl Smith, who was Bob Wenzel's first recruit, with the floater. Good move, but what I like about their doing, they're trying to cause some dribble penetration against the matchup. Dribbling into the open areas of the zone. Now Temple able to break the press, 35 left in the shot clock. This man can't be left alone, Victor Kostarfin. He was three for three against West Virginia beyond the three-point arc. That's one's down, and it's 6-6. That time they left him wide open. Victor Starfin, who played for Clarence Turner at Camden, won two group four titles at Camden while he was playing. The deflection by Jones, the steal by Strickland. One thing Temple feeds off of is the other opponent's turnovers. They don't turn the ball over to, uh, that much. They do a very good job of keep, uh, handling the pressure. Johnson working inside against Chuck Weiler, and Weiler whistled for the foul. That is his first. Weiler fouled out of last, last game against University of Delaware. I don't know. I want to see some of the contact. Okay, we see Johnson getting big inside there. Maybe a little uh, pushing off there. But Wild looks like he's just riding him, just keeping his hands up. Uh, on the elbows, a little bit of little bit of uh, love tap, as we call him. You know, excuse me, one of those. That's what foul. Excuse me, foul. <laughs> you who practiced the uh, philosophy, uh, no autopsy, no foul <laughs> on the uh, low blocks here at Rutgers. Frazier Johnson. It's one of two, and the Owls go up 7-6. Johnson, the first junior college transfer to play at Temple for John Cheney. Wilder, back outside to Worthy. He's not bashful. Daryl Smith, offensive class. Very good. That time by Daryl Smith, getting on the weak side. The Owls handle the pressure. Look how aggressive Rutgers is in their press. Hey, that's how they're going to win games this year, as they've been doing with their defense. Now it's Strickland's turn. Over Weiler, no. Tipped by Johnson, but Mike Jones blocks for Rutgers. Mike Jones, who's made the transition from forward to guard, fishing to Worthy, who lays it off glass. That's one of my keys for this game was whether or not Temple could get back on defense and stop Rutgers' fast break, keep the crowd out of the game. They're doing a poor job so far. As Rutgers builds a three-point lead, there's the steal by Jones and a blocking foul on Victor Kostarfin. Temple appears to be a little rattled. They have to figure out how, how they're going to combat this devastating press that Rutgers is putting on them. Victor Kostarfin, who in the last five games committed just nine turnovers, an average under two turnovers a game in his sophomore season, into the ball game now for Temple, Rick Brunson. He replaces Frazier Johnson. 
So the Owls go small with Kerskarfin and Brunson. Small, but they're still very quick and athletic. Strickland is a very athletic player, so they're a quick team now. And where they travel with the ball. So now Rutgers will come up with their full court pressure. Wenzel showing a 1 2 2 press. Turnovers even so far, but turnovers are called an evil by John Chaney. He despises when his Temple team turns the ball over. Yes, and we might have an opportunity to see how much he despises them if he get, really gets mad. There's Jones off to Kiscarfin. His second three point basket, and Temple ties it at 10. Rule of thumb. Never let a guy hit three in a row. So I imagine the next one, well, he won't be so wide open. Worthy, driving. Keeps it alive. And there's Mark Strickland collecting. Strickland averages 4.6 rebounds a game. Watch your hands inside. Rick Brunson, a 6'3", 180-pound freshman from Salem, Massachusetts. He'll shoot. Won't go, and Jones with the rebound. He showed that he wasn't bashful. I thought that was a poor shot. Brunson, who got his first start against Rhode Island as the Owls lost at McGonigal Hall. Here's the steal by Eddie Jones. Christopher had been bothered by a sprained ankle, so Brunson got the start. Low blocks, kill goal, blocked by Worthy, and it goes out of bounds, but Temple will maintain possession. Now Wenzel, who has been very happy with the depth he's developed, comes off the bench with Jamal Phillips, number 31, Donnell Lumpkin, number 23, and Lumpkin can also fire it up off the bench, and another instant offense player, number 35, Alvin Rich. You know, earlier this season, they were coming in with a platoon type of uh, team. They were taking the whole starting five out, including their second unit, unit in, and it proved to be very effective. Strickland shot, no, but Eddie Jones tips it up and in, and Temple leads Rutgers 12-10. What a sore spot for Rutgers for the last few games, checking out on that weak side. And Eddie Jones, his fourth and fifth points of the night. Both Duquesne and Delaware crashed the boards against Rutgers. Rutgers was able to get some easy fast break baskets, but to try to keep the Owls off the glass tonight. Here's Mick Kilgore dribbling it up the sideline, and he bounces it over the sideline. Rutgers ball, so another turnover by Temple. Yeah, and a lot of people will probably wonder why Kilgore is that he tried to bring the ball up. He's coming the game as forward, but here's the guy who's played all five positions. Uh, last year, he even started a point guard. So he has the ability to move all over the court. Inside look, Jamal Phillips takes the feed from Daryl Smith, and we're tied at 12. Daryl Smith can make so many things happen on offense. Very athletic player. Not the most physical, but does a good job for Wenzel on the glass. Kilgore straddling the half-court line, feeds to Jones. It won't go down. And an offensive rebound to Mark Strickland. And Strickland tried to hook up with Kilgore. And the Owls guilty of another turnover. Well, with 11.50 to play in the first half, we'll take a break. Rutgers and Temple even at 12. We're even at 12, and here's the basket that did it as Daryl Smith finds Jamal Phillips. Yes. Smith comes, Smith comes out in the wing. Darryl, um, Jamal did a good job of positioning himself well. All he took, took didn't even hit a bounce. One drop step and laid it in. You hate to see those big guys put it on the floor down uh, low. Well, I mean, guards love it. Guards love it because that's the easy pickings for them. Santiago, good trigger for Rutgers. It's Phillips, Rich, Lumpkin, and Smith. Here's Phillips, the freshman from New York City, and Danelle Lumpkin can't find the range, but the long rebound out to Damon Santiago. Listed at 6-1, I don't know, Roy. Alvin Rich, soft touch, no. And Jamal Phillips fighting for the ball, keeps it alive on the baseline. 
and Rutgers will maintain possession. Both teams have been very aggressive so far going after uh, rebounds. Now Wenzel calls Phillips his warrior, and he fought for that ball. Lumpkin quickly 0 for 2, and a foul inside against Jamal Phillips, who was fighting for position underneath. <laughs> fighting, yes. But, uh, you know, I like it because he's aggressive. As long as he stays aggressive, I, I can accept those aggressive fouls. I don't, the ticky-tack ones are the ones I have a problem with. Full court pressure by Rutgers. And Lumpkin bats it out of bounds. You can tell this is a, not your typical uh, Temple team. Uh, you wouldn't have as many deflected balls. They, the Temple team of old have been very sure of their passing. Jones ahead to Rick Brunson, and Brunson is clobbered by Lumpkin. That wasn't ticky-tacky. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out was he trying to go for the ball when he thought he was playing football and going for a body block. <laughs> That's one on Lumpkin, four on the Scarlet Knights. Kerstarfin. Originally played at Cincinnati, then transferred from that program to Temple. Kilgore backing in. Offensive foul. Daryl Smith threw it. Kilgore delivered it. Kilgore has been struggling as of late. He was held scoreless in the last game against the University of West Virginia, and now he's trying to force the, off the offense, I believe. I'm sure he's, he feels a lot of pressure this year because we just can't. Most people think he's going to be uh, a first-round draft pick. Kilgore was held scoreless against West Virginia. That was the first time since the 11th game of his freshman year. Lumpkin. That time, the close-range rebound and score for Donnell. And it's 14-12 Rutgers. And Alvin Rich with the pick on the way back. Ahead to Lumpkin. And Lumpkin able to track it down. The pressure by Rutgers again. Temple's turning it back, forgetting that these guys are looking to deflect the ball from behind. Santiago showing good poise for a freshman guard. Yes, and I believe it started uh, last game when he received a lot of confidence by doing a great job in Redden's place. Alvin Rich, the junior college transfer from Gen Genesee Community College of Batavia, can't get it to go down. And suddenly the scoreboard clock has gone out and the fans here at the rack realize it. Alvin Rich with the rebound as play continues and the clock comes back on. But it's Santiago to Phillips. Buzzer went off for a second and we've got a jump ball. Well, the referees didn't see it because there's only three of them out there. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Wenzel looked over like, why does this have to happen when we're on the <laughs> offensive break? <laughs> Santiago, as we see, dribbling in and dishes the passes off to Phillips. One bounce and tries to take a power dribble. Kilgore is right there to the, um, just catches the all ball, ties him up, and is Rutgers ball. Possession arrow favoring Rutgers. Alvin Rich checks out. Steve Worthy into the ball game again. Worthy coming to Rutgers from Vincennes Junior College. He was a junior college All-American. Misses the rim that time, and Rick Brunson starts it back for Temple. Tom Cheney not very deep this, this year, playing seven players as John Connick gets up off the bench, ready to check in. Connick is lucky to get a minute or two a game. But I feel that they're going to have to use many more players this year. Uh, try to groom them for next year because they have a relatively young team. Pushing foul inside. And number 22, Johnny Connick does come in as Worthy picks up the foul. His first of the fifth of the Scarlet Knights. Chuck Weiler back in. Jamal Phillips checks out. We still have not seen Aaron McKee. And a three-point shot, the time bounce for Mick Kilgore. We call that the shooter's touch. We don't call it time bounces. 
so Kilgore happy to get in the book after being shut out in West Virginia, and Temple up by one at 15-14. Here's the guy that can answer, Worthy driving and scoring. He was in motion that time by Worthy. Seven points for Steve. Again, taking advantage of dribble, dribble penetration on Temple. Long lob to Mark Strickland. for Starfin with 30 seconds left on the 45 second clock and a reach in foul on Danelle Lumpkin his second that was a very stupid foul that time by Lumpkin you should always step up and set it down you won't get as many foul calls on you that time he's being over aggressive and he slapped at the ball he got a foul call that's the second foul so he has to leave the game Alvin Rich is in Victor Starford, who started 38 of 41 games in his Temple career, missing from long range, finally. We believe that's a little bit of a force, though. Weiler, in that high post, able to find Jones. Jones can't get the roll, and Strickland with the rebound. Well, for Temple to be so athletic, it's hard to figure out why they're out rebounding so much. <laughs> alone is Rick Brunson for three. For his first basket and Temple's up 17-16. Make it 18-16. Worthy leaning in. Rebounded by Connick. Worthy's trying to get on track by forcing the ball up a little. Good ball movement would help to help him get a better shot. Jones as they look down low to Strickland. Crowd wanted a walk. Rick Brunson rebound. The reverse for two. Good reverse layup that time. Crowd wanted a walk because Strickland actually did a two-step in the paint. And now the crowd coming to life here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center. There's Scarlet Heights down by four with 7.20 left in the first half. Jones will take it himself. No. Rebound. Up and in. Mike Jones. Again, we saw another good sign of dribble penetration. Missed shot by Jones. He's there to get his own rebound and stick it in. I must have said Mike Jones making the transition going from guard last year and a defensive stopper to the forward position. He's gotten stronger. He's going to the glass and rebounding well. And we've got a foul on Mike Jones. And a little bit of confusion, but Rutgers now at 17 foul, so the Temple will go to the line for a one and one opportunity. Now Jones picking up his first. Mike Jones is all is known for being a little bit over aggressive at times. That time he was he was caught, and he needs to develop. I mean, he is a good defensive player. More times than not, he helps he helps you with his defensive pressure. It hurt him. Well, Eddie Jones missing. Mike Jones rebounding for Rutgers. And a technical foul called on Mike Jones, who turned to the official to complain and immediately got the T, and it really wasn't much of a T. Well, he turns into the official to complain, and then he's trying to cover it up by saying he was talking to Santiago. <laughs> I guess they say most referees have ears like Dumbo, they hear everything. So Mike Jones will sit down, and Victor Kerstarfin, an 88% free throw shooter, one of the best in the Atlantic 10, has it roll around the rim and out. And look at the sea of scarlet he's shooting into. It's tough. I mean, you have to see it because the last backboard, you have to see it when you follow through. And I'm sure it plays on your mind. Well, he makes the second. So Temple leading 21-18. We'll take a break. Temple's ball when we come back right after this. They said he had about a 40% chance of making it through the operation, but even if he should make it through the operation, they couldn't tell whether he'd live after that or not. 
when they first came out, he says, so far, so good. And they just said the next 72 hours will really show how he's going to do. And uh, he did fine. I have great confidence in that hospital. Temple up by three at 21-18 off the technical foul, says to Mike Jones. So Temple will inbound the ball from our center court broadcast position here at the wrap. Eddie Jones, the hero against West Virginia to inbound. Jones, a sophomore from Pompano Beach, Florida. Set out last season due to Prop 48 guidelines. And he gets it in easily to Victor Kuskarpin. Alvin Rich doing a good job down low trying to front Mick Kilgore in the low blocks. Yeah, I, I really didn't, never realized that Kilgore was actually that big. 6-9. There's the feed to Strickland. Wyler changed his shot. And Daryl Smith got the rebound. Rutgers running quickly. Santiago and a blocking foul on Victor Kostarpin. That's his second. Santiago again doing a good job recognizing what he has. He got a foul call. Just the fifth team foul on Temple this half, so the Scarlet Knights still not shooting the bonus. Wyler. Good screen for Worthy. Worthy giving to Rich short. Alvin Rich having a tough time getting going tonight. And the Owls with a three-point lead. Eddie Jones makes it six. What a good shot that time by Jones. Showing that he has range from three-point line. Eddie Jones with eight points. He came in averaging 12 and a half a game. And Jones has been able to pick up the slack for the injured Aaron McKee. Smith blocked by Strickland, and it goes back out top to Santiago. <laughs> and Strickland put a little grimace on his face after he blocked that shot. Like, hey, you're not coming in here. From the corner, Smith side of the backboard. No. Rick Brunson on the break. And it's blocked by Smith. But Rick Brunson stays with it, or rather Victor Kostarpin on the loose ball. That time, Darrell ran down the court, timed the jump just perfect, and blocked it. Kostarpin with nine. Temple leading by eight, 26-18, with five minutes left in the first half. Worthy, well beyond the three-point strike. That was an NBA three. Yes, and it seemed like he tried a couple of college threes. They didn't fall for him. He had to go out a little further. Steve Worthy with 10 points for the Scarlet Knights. Eddie Jones. Wyler tipped it, but Mark Strickland there. Temple getting a couple of opportunities at the offensive end. Jones short. And Weiler this time, outletting the Darrell Smith. Smith does it himself, and he drew the foul. That time I thought he could have got off with a foul caught on because he extended his left arm. Instead, it goes on Eddie Jones. That's his first. And here's Jamal Phillips. Phillips at 6'7", 215, back into the ball game. Jamal very good tough player. He's going to be a good player over a couple of years. Well, he's a good player now. I say if, if he really right. works hard, he's going to be a real good player next year and, and throughout his career. Mike Jones also back in. He replaces Alvin Rich. Darren Smith. Now with five points. 73% free throw shooter, a senior from Washington, D.C. One of the only, one of the two seasons on the team. Smith makes them both. Johnny Connick, over 22, comes in for Temple, replacing Victor Kristarfin. That little delay in action gives Rutgers a chance to set up their uh, trap to no avail. 
Daddy Jones does it all by himself. They're not going to miss the key <laughs> with Jones playing this well. Jones has 10, and Temple leads by 5 with 4.04 left. There's the turnover by Rutgers, and it's Jones at the defensive end as well. You know, sometimes all it takes is one game to really get you get you going, to make you feel confident about yourself, and you start to uh, expand your game some. And maybe that's what Jones has done. Kilgore going on Smith. Won't go. Mick with the rebound, stripped by Darryl Smith and Santiago. With Worthy on the break, gives it up. Great fast break that time. Santiago did a good job of seeing the open man. Kilgore goes on Phillips, and he's fouled. I think Kilgore was trying to draw the foul and also put it up and um, try to get a three-point play. Most important thing is to get the two. If he's going to foul, he's going to foul. But try for the two. Temple has been able to use the long pass against this 2-2-1 Rutgers press. Now Rutgers is going to have to readjust. She dropped that second, that first line of a defense, drop it back a little bit, cut off that second pass, and then they could cause uh, cut off that long pass. Because you can't bring up the back that guy because then you leave the basket exposed, and you don't want to do that. Weiler in, Phillips out as Mick Kilgore, the senior out of West Philadelphia High School. He was all Philadelphia. He was the Public League Player of the Year winning the Marquardt Award. Clock is being reset as we have a delay. So the Gremlins at work here in Piscataway <laughs> tonight. Well, we have a second. Let's take a look at that fast break that Steve Worthy finished off in style as Smith with the strip. And Santiago does a great job of pushing the ball up, seeing Worthy phase away, and Worthy does the dunk like, like he's done in many games, getting up there. I'm surprised at his leaping ability. He doesn't seem like the type of, he doesn't have the physique that you think a leaper should have, or most people have. Be, you know, most of the road to the slender. He has pretty good size, and he's shown he can get up. Worthy at 6'5", 210 pounds. Now Kilgore, who must be ice cold standing at the line all this time. <laughs> and Kilgore silences the Scarlet Knights fans in the end zone. He's got four points now. You hit your first one, you quiet them down, and they, you notice they won't get as loud as they can if you would have missed the first one. Kilgore makes them both in Temple. Leaves Rutgers 30-25. We'll take a break and come back to Piscataway right after this. On this our PSE&G Game of the Week. Well, the clock continues to have a few problems. The biggest problem, though, is the 30 under Temple, as far as Bob Wenzel is concerned. It's nice spelling by five. And play will continue, despite the problems up top. As you can see, with field goal percentage, both teams are shooting poor. Rutgers is shooting at 33%. Temple is not shooting all that much better at 37. And that looks about the difference. Five-point spread with now 3.20 left in this first half as the clock is sorted out. Jones, Santiago in the backcourt, and then it's Worthy, Weiler, Strickland may have got a piece of Worthy's shot there. And I think that time Worthy just forced the ball and um, just readjusted his shot. Temple with Kilgore, and Kilgore, two-point shot, no, rebounded by Mark Strickland inside. And that was a quick leap by Strickland that time, he came up with the ball and uh, just went straight on up and jammed it. Temple by seven off Strickland's first basket of the evening. Santiago for three. I was wondering where he was going to start taking that shot. They were leaving a wide open out there at the top of the key. 
Four points for Damon. And Rutgers goes to its press off the make. 2-10 left first half. Temple by four with the ball. Eddie Jones. A two-point basket. He's got a dozen. That's his average. Right at his average. And he's playing a, a great job. Uh, you know, he's doing a good job in place of the king. This guy might find himself in the starting spot if he can't take the play well. Well, he lost his job in the starting lineup when John Cheney decided to go with a big front line and inserted Fraser Johnson into the lineup. Now Bobby Wenzel sends Donnell Lumpkin in. Wenzel a bit bewildered by the call that gives Temple the ball. Jones right side to Strickland and Daryl Smith quickly out to cover him. Rutgers press is becoming non-effective against uh, Temple. They're slowing him down a little bit, but they're finding deep ways to break it even quicker. Rick Brunson slices to the basket. And he's fouled by Donnell Lumpkin. And Donnell, now with three personal fouls. You know, one thing at the play, you never think you foul anyone. Even when you do foul him and you know you foul him, you can't let the refs know that you fouled him. So you always got to get upset. The ninth team foul on the Scarlet Knights. One more, and Temple will get an automatic two-shot penalty as Rick Brunson. Now with six points. Brunson, a freshman from Salem, Massachusetts. High school All-American. from the McDonald's All-American team. And now it's Temple by seven with just over a minute to play in the first half. Lumpkin, block, and then it goes out of bounds off Johnny Connick. But Connick got all ball on Donnell Lumpkin. Lumpkin needs to develop a mid-range shot, or he needs to learn how to put the ball on the, on the floor, dribble once or twice, left or right, doesn't matter, and pull up. He's pretty much a standstill shooter, something he did when he was in high school. Santiago rears up, in and out from three-point range. And Jones has been everywhere for John Cheney tonight. Grabs the rebound. When you have someone out, someone else usually steps up, and tonight is Jones. Here's Mick Kilgore missing. Offensive board by Eddie well, Jones. Who well, else? This guy's played both ends of the floor, doing a very good job. 14 points for Eddie Jones. Now just 23 seconds left in the game is Temple. Up to their biggest lead of the half, Darrell Smith cuts it by two. And the Knights trail by seven. Brunson, almost losing, gets it off to Jones. Very close to a 10-second violation as time runs down. Johnny Connick knocks it down in the lane. And so the Temple Owls lead the court. Leading the Rutgers Scarlet Knights here in Piscataway at the half, 39 to 30. Well, we'll be back with our halftime festivities and, of course, New Jersey Network news coming up after the half. We're at halftime here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center on the campus of Rutgers University. Live coverage on our PSE&G Game of the Week and the Temple Owls leading the Scarlet Knights by a 39 to 30 score. And joining us at halftime is Jack Murphy of PSENG. And Jack, welcome back to NJN's PSENG Game of the Week. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights trailing the Temple Owls in its Atlantic 10 contest by nine points at the half. I'm Pat Scanlon along with Roy Hinson. Roy, are the Scarlet Knights a catch-up team? Well, we're going to soon find out. They're going to have to be a catch-up team um, tonight. They're Temple has done some things very well. The uh, Rutgers have done some things well, but uh, you know the biggest thing I can see, the glaring, is uh, they got to start shooting better. Yep. Taking some poor shots. The shot selection has been terrible. It's not the same as I mean, and you could credit Temple's defense. That matchup zone is maybe giving Rutgers a few problems. Okay, well let's take a look at some first half highlights. Daryl Smith came up with one of them, a defensive strip, and then Santiago to Steve Worthy on the break. 
And Santiago pushes the ball up off the strip. Sees Worthy coming out of the corner of his eye, pass it to him for a monster slam. As you said, Steve Worthy can get up there, the junior from Trenton High School. Here's Eddie Jones, who's been the story for Temple, the sophomore from Pompano, Florida. Eddie Jones show, shows how he can work the boards. That time, a tip-up off of Kil, Kilgore miss. And Eddie Jones beyond the three-point strike. Eddie Jones shows that he can play inside and outside by hitting that three that time. I think he's been the mainstay for Rutgers. I mean, for Temple. And, of course, Temple shooting the ball better than Rutgers, 42% to a measly 34% for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers not doing well from the free throw line, Roy, and then uh, being out-rebounded by Temple, a team that's last in the Atlantic 10 and rebounded. Yes, that is something. Temple go, come, came into the game. They only out-rebounded one other per opponent, and that was Illinois. So that's not saying too much for Rutgers right now. You know, that's something, that's the area which was in question beforehand, and now it's going to be glaring right now. The credit to Rutgers defense with turning Temple over nine times in the first half. We'll take a break and come back with this second half of play from Piscataway right after this. We invite you to join us two weeks from tonight as our NJN camera crew will be back here at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center as the Scarlet Knights entertain John Griffin and the St. Joseph's Hawks in another Atlantic 10 matchup. St. Joe's one of the good young teams in the Atlantic 10. They lost Rap Curry to a knee injury, but the Hawks trying to get it going on Hawk Hill. Leading scorers, Eddie Jones for the Temple Owls, Chris Tarpa with nine, and Brunson with six. And for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, Steve Worthy has been showing the way. Worthy with a dozen points for Bob Wenzel and company. As Temple will inbound the ball to start the second half of play, leading by nine, 39 to 30. Cheney comes back with Kilgore, Jones, Johnson, Strickland, and Chris Starfin. Wenzel counters with Worthy, Weiler, Jones. Here's Johnson over Weiler. Santiago running the show. The Temple does goes right with what they started the game with, pushing the ball inside right to Johnson. Santiago had the hot hand in the first half. Begins with a miss and the Knights down by 11. Cheney thought that his team had to do a good job on the boards. He wanted it to be a one and done situation for the Rutgers offense. Frazier Johnson missing. And Santiago pushes it. Kind of indecisive, Roy. Didn't use glass. Didn't yeah, I know where they go right at the rim. Well, I think I, that time I believe he thought he was going to get um, someone go after the ball and maybe block it. Rutgers taps the ball out, but it's Kilgore controlling. And Tempo resets. Eddie Jones for three. Now Rutgers has to get into the offense and find the range. Right now, they're playing real flat. They're not aggressive. They're not, the crowd is, is doing their part by trying to get them motivated, but they're just playing real flat. Jones driving is fouled by, I believe, Mark Strickland. Yes, it is Strickland. That's his first. Jamal Phillips comes in for Chuck Weiler. And it's Mike Jones to inbound. Where they to Santiago. Santiago is stripped by Chris Starf, and it goes out of bounds off Temple. Marcus seemed a little disoriented there. There's, you think they would be running a play, and uh, he's kind of freelanced it. Phillips over Johnson. Goaltending counted. I don't know. <laughs> I thought... <laughs> I hate to play referee, but I thought that that ball was, uh, that was a good block. Here comes the fans, and here comes the full-court pressure as Chris Starfin is trapped by Worthy and Smith. Worthy, steal and score! And that's the Rutgers pressure that we used to see. Another turnover. Worthy jams it home. And Rutgers cuts the lead to five. And we've got a foul inside. The pushing foul on Mark Strickland. 
as you really can't hear the whistle at court side. Yeah, I was wondering what was going on. I didn't know whether there was a little uh, confrontation between two players or what. As you look at uh, another look at the deflection there, well, it wasn't a deflection. It was just a uh, just a bad pass. Worthy gets it, slams it in. And the three-point play for Steve Worthy. He's got 17, and Rutgers has cut this tempo lead to four. Now two on one, Johnson to Strickland, and the Owls pull it back out. After Starfin, good look to Johnson, and he got mugged inside. Frazier Johnson with Daryl Smith all over his back. That time he allowed them to possibly make the three-point play. If you're going to get a foul call, especially when the guys in the paint, keep hold his arms down. There it is. The, the ball goes into Johnson. And you see Daryl goes over his back, and the ball was deflected by Worthy. Bob Wenzel up, storming the sidelines. Rutgers down by four. Fraser Johnson, yeah. offensive foul as he leaned in with the right elbow and shoulder. Well, he kept his, uh, he kept his elbows uh, shoulder length, and when he turned around, he turned that, or turned around with an elbow right into the chest of Phillips. Now John Chaney has a decision to make, because that is three personal fouls on the center, Frazier Johnson. I would take him out. They've still got plenty of time in this game. It's 17, better than 17 minutes to go. I'll take him out, give him a little breather, and then exert him back in about this 12-minute uh, point. Rutgers goes into their weave with 25 left on the shot clock. Cross court to Santiago. Left alone, Daryl Smith in the corner. A two-point basket by Daryl Smith, and Rutgers has cut the lead to two. Deal with the pressure. Now Wenzel directing his offense. Or his defense, rather. Kilgore! Well, he struggled in the West Virginia game, but he has seven here against the Scarlet Knights. And Deppel goes back up by four. He's doing a good job of getting this into the middle. That's his shot right there. He likes to take off right, drive from right to left, get to the paint, and go up with a two point. Daryl Smith on the glass, tipped up by Jamal Phillips. So Rutgers on a 9-2 run. Strickland bangs into Phillips. Soft shot, no. Johnson fights for the rebound, lays it up, no. And Strickland pounds it home with emphasis. <laughs> Weak side boards again. Rutgers sore spot. They're going to have to put somebody on there to detonate someone to block out on the weak side because they have been killing on that weak side all night. Santiago works it in the paint to Phillips over Johnson. Smart play by Rutgers to work it inside against Johnson, who's in foul trouble. Yes, because then he has to play very tentative in there or he's going to pick up his, his fourth foul. Phil Gord to Strickland. And a pushing foul. Jamal Phillips says yes. Yes, it's me. When, he, when um, Strickland caught the ball, Jamal had his hands in his back. And when, so when the ball came into him, he went up, and he rest figured that he pushed him off a little bit. Three fouls on Jamal Phillips as Alvin Rich comes into the ball game. And we'll take a timeout with 15.46 left to play in the second half. Temple leading by four. Cheney of Temple in some very fast company amongst the winningest active Division I coaches along with the Tark, Dean Smith, Jimmy Bayheim of Syracuse, and John Thompson of Georgetown. That's pretty good company right there. He's been a good, good coach all along, but he's really coming to his own being at Temple. Won a national championship at Bethune, or rather at Cheney State. Coached there for 10 years, then came to Temple. Has only missed postseason play at Temple once in nine seasons, that in his first year. I guess he coaches this. I don't know. I think this is more instinct than anything else. <laughs> it's tough to coach something like that. Sticking to it, showing there. He did a good job of being aggressive, going to the basket, anticipating well a missed shot. 
Mark Strickland with the jam. And now Temple to inbound, leading by four. Johnson, he's a bull inside, misses. Loose ball. Taken away by Daryl Smith. Tip from behind by Jones, and back can the Owls. Here's Starfin. And he traveled. One pass too many, Roy. Yeah, one pass, but what it is, he wanted to, he he wanted to pull up, but then he saw someone open, so he threw the belt, threw the ball, but his leg, his feet didn't stop. <laughs> now the Scarlet Knights down by four as they go into the weave. Alvin Rich, Mike Jones, Santiago, Phillips, and Smith for Rutgers. Jones floating on the baseline, tipped up and in. It was either Phillips or Rich. They should have gave it to Phillips. Here's the Rutgers pressure from the end zone. break the press. Jones with 16 points. One way to break it and then put an exclamation point at the end of it. Temple backed up by four. 47-43. Up the end line. Darryl Smith trying to go baseline. It was shut off. Now Chuck Wyler comes in for Jamal Phillips. Steve Worthy also back in the game replacing Mike Jones. And here comes the Rutgers full court pressure. Kilgore triggers to Kistarfin. Now the long pass over to Strickland. Just meeting. being very aggressive that time probably a little bit too aggressive so we got a double foul call possession arrow points to temple or to Rutgers. toward Rutgers now the table asking for a clarification Alvin Rich into the game for the Scarlet Knights, who came into the ball game averaging 11.2 a game. Here's a look at the double foul, Roy. Yeah, it was. both guys get a little physical. She's strict and pushing off there. Wallace right there. And a turnover. Eddie Jones with the steal and the jam. This guy's played a great game today. 18 points. Really, and the thing about it, if McKee was here, how much better would they be? Rich to Wyler. And Worthy. Out of bounds off Victor Kostarfin. As Jones goes, Johnson goes out, out chasing after the ball. Momentum took him out of bounds. I feel sorry for the cheerleaders over there. with a bullet pass to Smith. This time it goes out of bounds as Darrell loses the handle, driving to the basket. Yeah, he lost the handle, but that was a good drive on his part. If he, he would have left the handle, he had a wide open lay lane for a layup. Temple by six, with Chris Starfin handling the ball against the pressure. Johnson off to Eddie Jones. Chris Starfin from the foul line. And it's rebounded by Wyler. Santiago on the break, off glass, no. And Chris Starfin, and all of six feet tall, there to grab the rebound. Kilgore, a three, short. And Johnson didn't have to leave his feet for the rebound. For the traveling ball, Rutgers ball. Play a little sloppy right now by on both sides. Alvin Rich will sit down. 
Mike Jones back in, as is Donnell Lumpkin. Lumpkin replaces Smith. And they could use Lumpkin's outside shooting if he can find the range in the second half. And that's the big key, if he can find a range. Sometimes Lumpkin uh, goes back to his high school days of his shooting mentality, and he doesn't always shoot a smart shot. He's a 36% shooter from beyond the three-point stripe. Well, he passed one up there, Roy. Yeah, surprised me. Well, I think that's how he is. He just came in the game. He should be shooting right off. You should give yourself a chance to work yourself up for the offense. Steve Worthy can't hang on to the ball, so Temple gets it back off the Rutgers turnover. 12.30 to play in the second half. Rick Brunson. Now Kilgore. Mike Jones got a piece of it. And Mike Jones hustles with Strickland to force the jump ball. The arrow favors Temple, but a good play by Jones. Yeah, he goes for the ball. The one thing... Usually he, he gets a uh, foul call being overly aggressive. At that time it worked in his favor because he tied the ball up. And now next time they will have the possession again. Jamal Phillips replaces Weiler. Phillips gets a piece of the shot by Kilgore. Strickland stripped and here comes Santiago. Gives it up to Mike Jones. Fletcher's cuts the Temple lead to four. That wasn't a strip, that was a baseball bat. <laughs> and hit that ball. Kilgore answering quickly at the other end. He's got nine points now. So the Scarlet Knights able to score in transition, but back come the Owls breaking the press. Jones bothered. Missed the shot. No, kept alive. Jamal Phillips. As that basket must have a lid on it for Phillips tonight. Good look inside and calls timeout. 11-18 to play. The Owls leading 53-45. They said he had about a 40% chance of making it through the operation, but even if he should make it through the operation, they couldn't tell whether he'd live after that or not. When they first came out, he says, so far, so good. And they just said the next 72 hours will really show how he's going to do. And uh, he did fine. I have great confidence in that hospital. A super swat that time by Mike Jones. Santiago pushes the ball up, seeing Jones on the left. A nice little sh shovel pass and for the two. You got to give it up to him after he made the play at the other end. Then here's Mark Strickland answering for Temple off the feed by Brunson. That time he's good, good look inside there. Strickland goes straight up, no bounce, straight up, lays it in. So why didn't he put a little mustard on it by hanging on the rivers? <laughs> The you know, Ruckers have had their problems uh, with the tip. Tom Davis uh, was at Boston College in Stanford. He told me something when he was at Boston College. Tips never go in. And that's something that I, you know, I kind of learned and I kind of use it now. Instead of I catch the ball, gather myself and go up strong with it, as opposed to just trying to tip the ball in because you miss more than you make. Good advice. The former Rutgers standout who still holds the uh, block shot record here at the Piscataway. Ooh, Rutgers 37% from the field, Temple 41%. It has been ugly at times. And it's Temple. Up by seven, and Worthy turns it over for Rutgers. Guys seem like they're pressing a little bit. I'm talking about Rutgers now. They seem like they're just pressing a little bit too much now. Move the ball. Good decisions. Be, be sure of yourself. Temple by eight. And Rick Brunson. Worthy tipped it. Wenzel argued that Eddie Jones touched it before it went out of bounds. Bobby Wenzel. 
was quite a standout player. In fact, MVP of the Scarlet Knights in 69-70 and 70-71. One of those hard old players. And he's trying to teach us, uh, he teaches uh, the kids the same way. Just being hard nosed, just play aggressive each and every night. There's Kilgore showing his abilities to go to the hole. Something like that, he had to make a shot. He, gave, he faked like at least 10 times. <laughs> Mick Kilgore now has 11 as Temple leads by 10. Mike Jones can't find the handle. Rick Brunson fouled by Steve Worthy. This is just a bad game right here for Rutgers. It's just not in sync. It shows some flashes, but it just overall they just haven't been really into the game. Two shots for Rick Brunson. Six points tonight. Needs to bend his knees more. When you hit the front of the rim, that means you're not bending your knees. He knocks down the second, stretching Temple's lead to 11. And now Wenzel would love to find a hot three-point shooter. They go into the weeds, just get a little patience, settle themselves some. Ten minutes left in this one is Danell Lumpkin for three. Oh, Strickland gets up there. Oh, he was up. This, but he's a very good leaper, I tell you. Nice lean body. Been on the receiving end of some very good slams. Tenth rebound of the night for Mark Strickland, the 6'9 senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Both he and Kilgore are seniors for this Temple Isle team. John Cheney said that last year Macon stepped up at the end of the season, but Strickland and Kilgore also made real statements enabling them to get to the final eight. So they. They've been in a competition before. They know what it takes to win. So that will only help them in the long run. Christophe missing with the shot clock running down. But Eddie Jones catching in the second chance. He has 20 points. He's been all over the court. Defense, offense, he's done it all for Temple. Worthy inside dish to Phillips. And he is struggling offensively. Jump ball as Strickland is tied up by Mike Jones and the possession arrow favoring Rutgers. Hit a cardinal sin that time. Brought the ball down. Guards love it when you bring the ball down. Keep the ball up high so they won't have a chance to tie you up. Well, Eddie Jones has tied his career high at 20 against Illinois earlier for the Owls this season. As Smith... This is in the lane. Rick Brunson getting out on the break, dishing back to Kilgore right at strip, but regains and scores. And Rutgers will call another timeout as Temple extends its lead to 15 points. Bob Wessel looking for answers here tonight, and we'll take a break and come back after this. Let me look at the Scarlet Knight himself. Maybe he can knock down a three. <laughs> Wenzel calling time with 8.40 to play, down by 15 to Temple. And there's one of the reasons why. That's a big reason. Temple, I'm sure most of them are offensive boards because they lived on offensive glass. And Temple, not a good rebounding team as Daryl Smith slices to the basket for a deuce. That's a long way around to make a layup, but he made it. <laughs> Now the trap. There's Kilgore who can put it on the floor. And Karstarfin. Kilgore, the rebound. Taken away by Santiago. Guards love it. Santiago having problems. Kicked out of bounds by Vic Karstarfin. And almost got him a cheerleader. <laughs> it's dangerous on that in line. Don, John Cheney pleading with his players to... Take care of the ball. Now Rutgers, down by 13. And the horn goes off as the clock malfunctions again. The crowd is booing, but... 
And that is the toughest job in the house right now with 9,000 <laughs> fans on hand. Everyone's looking at the scorer's table. <laughs> and the only thing is, the scorer can't turn away. He has to look. <laughs> He's about to climb, un climb under the table over there. Now, time restored, 7.49 left. Rutgers has to put, make a, a serious run right now. You know, time is kind of dwindling away. You know, no one's hitting well from three point. You got to make it up by having stops down on defensive end and make sure every time down the floor, you make a good, good shot. And also, everyone crashed the rebound. Temple certainly has crashed the offensive boards. Steve Worthy. Looks down low to Jamal Phillips, strong off the board. And Rick Brunson. Temple only allowing one shot for Rutgers. Throw with Nick Gilmore, who gets it stripped by Mike Jones. Jones has to kick it back out. Phillips won't go. Gets the rebound is fouled by Victor Starfin. I was about to say, Kilgore, who has the ball handling abilities as he turned it over. Any NBA potential do you feel for Mick Kilgore? Well, they say he has some potential. Uh, you know, he, he's a big, well, he's 6'9", handles the ball like a guard. Probably play, if he got into the league, probably would have to play small forward. But um, well, definitely has to improve his shot because he hasn't been shooting well. But I see some potential there, definitely. Rutgers to inbound. And Worthy gets a blocking foul on Vic Kostarfin. Kostarfin grimacing. No doubt both in, maybe a little bit in pain, mostly in frustration, because that is four on Kostarfin. Yeah, but I'm sure he thought that he had a good block, a good a charge against uh, Worthy that time. Frazier Johnson up off the bench, and he'll replace Victor. Now, Frazier Johnson could take a charge and keep on kicking. <laughs> There's definitely a wide body. In fact, he hit Eddie Jones in practice and gave Jones a muscle spasm in his shooting arm. Some concern about Jones's touch. Until he started playing tonight and knocked home 20. There is no concern about that because he's been just throwing it up. Rutgers unable to get it done at the offensive end, still down by 13 with 6.43 left. Rick Brunson had an inside lane. And there's the call made by the outside official, official. here at half court. Official on the baseline missed that one. Well, sometimes the officials on the baseline aren't in a good position to see because the action happens so quick, so you rely on one of the other officials to make the call. Gut check time for the Scarlet Knights. Down by 13. Smith has it deflected by Jones. Darrell fights to regain to Jamal Phillips, who gets the player up in the air and draws the foul. But he can't get the basket to fall. Mick Kilgore left his feet on the pump fake. Well, he left his feet. <laughs> and a couple other guys left their feet because they weren't going to let him have an easy basket at all. You see, Darryl struggles for the ball, passes to Jamal Phillips inside, pump fakes, but Kilgore and uh, Johnson went up. And Phillips just, unable to make the first of two. Well, he's been struggling all night long. 50% free throw shooter, Al, he takes one of two. Right at his average. Now full court pressure as the Scarlet Knights are down by 12. For Starkin on the bench with four fouls. But the Owls able to break the press. No. Worthy. And it's showtime. Good pass by Worthy. Hopefully something like that is enough that will turn this uh, turn this game around. Get the Rutgers motivated. 19 for Worthy. Rutgers within 10, but Strickland with an easy finger roll to the hoop. Comes right back. Heartbreaker every time. You think you have some momentum there, and all of a sudden they make a basket and cuts it right, right in the, kind of nip it in the bud. It's a 12-point lead again for Temple. Worthy. 
Move the right wing to Jones, who dribble penetrates, can't go. And Johnson swings those elbows. Look out. Quickly to Eddie Jones. Tried to hook up with Strickland. Pass was deflected and it went out of bounds off Strickland. And the referee should have actually called a, a foul on that, even though he didn't make any contact down there. Because if one of those elbows hits a player and beat their eye level, it could possibly uh, do serious damage. Danell Lumpkin comes into the game for Bob Wenzel. And Wenzel has shed the coat. Serious business time now. Shed the coat, loosen the tie. And again, the horn goes crazy. The scoreboard, rather. Scoreboard flashed off for a moment. Now shows 5-13. And Wenzel, who's helped his Rutgers Scarlet Knights to an Atlantic 10 tournament championship and an Atlantic 10 regular season championship, takes advantage of the clock malfunction to huddle the Scarlet Knights. Both coaches wisely took advantage of that, that brief time to kind of reinforce some things that the te both teams need to do. Rutgers, first of all, needs to get in there, get good shots. Temple needs to limit them to one shot and get down the other end, take a little time off, and also get a good shot. Lumpkin looking for Worthy. Worthy got mugged by Strickland inside. No call. Then back out top is Eddie Jones picking up the foul as he grab Damon Santiago. You get a mugging inside, then you get a ticky-tack foul, and that's the one they call outside. That's two on Jones. Jones has been a little quiet. Um, not as not as a big half as he had in the first half. 16 fouls on Temple, so Santiago to the line to shoot one, and perhaps the bonus. As I look over at Temple's bench, one thing I noticed about Cheney, he's been a little subdued. Well, as I say that, I can hear him over here. I haven't been hearing, I haven't been hearing him because usually I'm, I remember him always screaming. That's one voice you can always hear over the crowd. Ball went out of bounds off a Temple player, so Worthy will inbound underneath the basket. Somebody has to move. Jones comes out. Now Worthy. In and out. And Rick Brunson. The 6-3 guard collecting the rebound. Brunson. Oh, did he call glass? <laughs> Nine points for Rick Brunson. That's five over his season average. That time he over-penetrate, there's no one to throw the ball to. Pump fake got uh, Daryl Smith, Mike Jones up, and threw it off the glass. Lumpkin, the three-point basket, cuts Temple's lead to 11. Strickland, across the half-court line to Jones. Let's see if Temple can be patient and Eat some of that 45 second clock with just over four minutes to play in the second half. Phillips guarding Johnson. Johnson, nice turnaround. Good turnaround. Didn't look like he got off the ground though. Somebody could just turn around and just shot it over Jamal. Phillips. Five points for Frazier Johnson. Temple again up by 13. Santiago. Blocked by Jones. Gets it back. He's brave in there, but I don't know if he wants to be in amidst those 6'9", 6'10", front-line players of Temple. I guess he feels he can go amongst the trees and get a shot off. <laughs> he got pruned that time. A reach in foul on Mike Jones. The crowd was up in arms because that time I thought they didn't make it over, and I think the crowd agreed with me. They, if they did, they just barely made it over. That is two on Mike Jones. So we will take a timeout with the Temple Isles leading the Scarlet Knights 66 to 53, 323 left in this one. Funding for live college. John Cheney wanted to go big. He inserted Fraser Johnson into the starting lineup two games ago, and here's why. Yeah, I 
I guess it's fortunate for Rutgers that this guy's in foul trouble most of the game. But here he is, he takes a nice turnaround jump shot. And uh, if it wasn't for him being in foul trouble, as I said earlier, he would, uh, he would definitely have more points and definitely cause more problems for Rutgers. Fraser Johnson with five points. A junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, who came to the Temple program from Garden City Community College in Kansas. He'd been bothered in December by a sprain above the right ankle. He was playing weight at that time, up around 290, but John Cheney said that he's really made a commitment to losing the weight. He's, he's, well, he's down around 260, running the floor well, and certainly gives them a good presence on the low blocks. Definitely a big wide presence, clog up that middle. Speaking of wide bodies in Philadelphia, Jeff Rulin back with the Philadelphia 76ers run. Yes, uh, it was great. I talked to Jeff in, in fact on my way to the gym tonight, and uh, he gave me some incentive to go talk to his doctor, so it might be some hope for me. Here's sideline with a uh, bad knee problem. Uh, Rulin underwent a, an operation to regenerate some cartilage in the knee. Is that in your uh, future, perhaps? Uh, yes. Virtually, we had the same problem. His was more severe, so it definitely looks pretty good for me right now. And Roy Henson, perhaps back in uniform for those New Jersey Nets who've been playing well. Meanwhile, here at Rutgers, the Knights down by 13, and it stays at 13 as Chris Starfin can't drop the shot. 2.30 left, Santiago, three-point shot, no. Rich crashes the boards. But Eddie Jones with good rebounding position for Temple. Limiting Rutgers again to one shot. Temple realizes they don't have to score anymore. They just, uh, all they have to do is take some time off. When the shot clock is down, just put up a good shot. And Alvin Rich. Done poor for that play, a reach in foul. Well, you know, Mark Redden not playing the point for the Scarlet Knights tonight. Santiago taking his place. Has it been that the offense has been a little out of sync because of Santiago's presence, or has it been their poor shot selection and just a cold shooting touch? Well, uh, Santiago would have, uh, Redden would have helped deliver the ball to the guys in the proper places, but they haven't been shooting well at all. And Redden has nothing to do with blocking out. So that's one thing they had problems with. Here's a team that comes in here, worst rebounding team in the league, and they, uh, they let these guys look like they're the best rebounding team in the league. And Chris Darfin, with the shot clock running down to 14 seconds, is fouled by Damon Santiago. So Rutgers now with 17 fouls. Chris Darfin to the line. He shoot one and one. And Victor Kristarfin, an 88% free throw shooter. This is where the game gets long because Rutgers at this point, they have to foul. I mean, they have to keep fouling. They have to get down, get a relatively quick shot, and foul. Lumpkin, long range, three point shot is good. NBA three. And the lead cut to 10 with a minute and a half left. been able to answer quickly throughout this contest. Now there's the foul by Worthy on Kilgore. So Kilgore, who came into the game struggling from the free throw line at 54%, will go to the line to attempt a one and one. And Jones in as Worthy sits down. Jones, a defensive player for the Scarlet Knights. Don't forget, we'll be looking for you two nights from tonight, two weeks from tonight, rather, as the St. Joe Hawks come to town in another Atlantic 10 contest. <laughs> Kilgore may have been struggling, but he makes it. It's his 14th point of the night. Bob Wenzel running out of answers. As they hit those free throws, it's just like putting another nail in the coffin for Rutgers. Again, it is a 12-point lead for Temple. Santiago tried to feed Daryl Smith, and it's knocked out of bounds by Eddie Jones. We are down 12 points with a minute and 10 seconds to go. It's none of this, uh, no time for shake and bake. It's time to shoot some threes and, shoot and hopefully try to win this game. Mike Jones cuts it to 10, and Temple calls a timeout. 
And so now with 101 left, John Cheney wanting his Owls to take care of the ball against that full court pressure that Rutgers will set up. Don't forget, weeknights, Monday through Friday on New Jersey Network, it's New Jersey Network News for complete news, business, weather, and sports coverage of what's happening in the Garden State. You'll hear about it on New Jersey Network News at 7 and rebroadcast again at 11.30, Monday through Friday. Right, right now, well, Roy, what do you think? Rutgers down by 10 at this point has given up so many easy transition buckets when they're able to cut the lead it seems Temple able to break that pressure and get the quick deuce that's one thing Rutgers pressure has been their mainstay in this early season they're tonight they're just not aggressive in it I mean they have a couple of flurries where they're you know pretty aggressive but for the most part they kind of uh, they've been lackadaisical so uh they, you know that's uh, maybe that's the way they I don't know maybe it's one of those days which Temple does have the ability to take a team out of its offense. Yeah, and that's that's a tribute to the coaching. Uh, John Chaney, as we alluded to earlier, is a very good coach, and he co he teaches these guys discipline and also trying to you know stay focused. Don't get too too carried away. These guys these guys are not jumping all over the place. They're not celebrating like crazy. They're business as usual. They're going about their jobs, and that's the way he coaches. Alvin Rich picks up a quick foul, just two ticks off the clock. And that sends the freshman, Rick Brunson, to the line. He's a 77 free throw shooter, 77% free throw shooter. And he makes the first. Rutgers now with nine team fouls. One more, and it will be an automatic two-shot foul. One of two. Temple by 11. Under a minute to play. Jones off glass. Rebounded by Strickland. Tied up by Lumpkin. Went off the official. And it's going to go to Rutgers. <laughs> John Chaney's beside himself. He cannot believe that. And I can't believe it either. <laughs> but this is Rutgers' gym. <laughs> Lumpkin for three. No. And Jones rebounds, tied up by Daryl Smith, and fouled from behind by Smith. Well, Temple in the midst of a road swing. This is their second of four straight road games, and John Cheney has to feel good about his club. Beating West Virginia in West Virginia, and now beating the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers in the Athletic Center. That win at Morgantown was the first by Temple since 1987-88. Jones misses the first. And you see the looks on the faces of the Scarlet Knights. With 44 seconds left. And a 12-point lead. Lumpkin cuts it to nine. And Rutgers quickly calls timeout. So Wetzel down by nine and not ready to throw in the towel yet. We'll take a break and come back to Piscataway in just a moment. Bobby Wetzel and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights had held Duquesne to 27% shooting from the floor. And then Delaware came in and shot just 35% from the field. But the Temple Owls have done a better job of it tonight against the Scarlet Knight defense. And they lead by nine with 34 seconds left. Jones. Oh. Intentional foul on Donnell Lumpkin. And Mark Strickland was wide open. And Jones, who had been bothered spasm in the arm and now words being exchanged at center court Jones got away from the fracas and Bobby Wenzel out on the floor to settle Danell Lumpkin down and cut off his Scarlet Knights Steve Worthy will come back in 
really no need for that. No. I mean, at this point in the game, you know, both, both teams played hard. Yeah, you don't need that. I mean, that, that just kind of cheapens the, you know, it makes you, makes you like you don't, you're not a team player. You're not a good sport about it. Everyone loses a game here or there. They lost it. You know, I mean, they're about to lose this game. They're down by 11. Let's take a look at this foul again. It's almost like being in a car crash. Two guys just coming at you. And it was a hard foul. Definitely a free, um, an intentional foul shooting call. And they, as he missed the first one, but, uh, he gets one more shot. He makes it. And they get the ball back. Well, like I said, you don't need, at this point in the game, or any point in the game, you don't need these type, type of fouls and these type of um, things going on. And now the referee is signaling a technical foul had been called. Bob Wenzel stating his case. And Victor Kostarf into the line to shoot the technicals. The former Camden High standout will ice this one. Kostarfin now in double figures with 10. Coming from that great program down in Camden where they had many of championships and have been tough through the years. Kostarfin cashes in both free throws to stretch Temple's lead to 73-61. John Cheney's Owls will inbound the ball from center court. Kilgore triggers, and this one academic now as Daryl Smith wraps up Rick Brunson. An amazing run by the, the Temple program under John Cheney. Twice he's been coach of the year in college basketball in 86 87 when. The Owls were 32 and 4. Then 87 88, when they were number one ranked and 32 and 2. Seven trips to the NCAA and one to the NIT in nine seasons at Temple. That's amazing. That shows the mark of good coaching, great recruit, recruiting classes. And they say all his players have nothing but good things to say about him when they leave, too. Down by 14, Santiago tries for Stark and rebounds. And time running out on the Scarlet Knights. Mike Jones deflects the ball out of bounds. You know the last minute of the game is always the longest? Especially <laughs> <laughs> when the home team is down by so much. And I'll tell you one thing, there won't be a rush out of the parking lot. Many of the fans have already left, but... Temple about to improve to 6-2, and 3-1 and one in the Atlantic 10. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, beaten for the third time this season, they drop to 7-3. and three. More importantly, 1-1 one one in the Atlantic 10. And so John Cheney and the Chep Temple Owls win in Piscataway. Their second win in a row on the road. They win it 75-61 over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Coming up on NJN, Secret Army will join that in progress. But for now, for Roy Hinson, I'm Pat Scanlon. So long, everybody.